morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to see you all this morning. Um, it looks like there are a few more empty seats than there were last week, but I'm, I'm really glad to see every one of you this morning. And like I said, we do have, we have a two-year-old in, in the back, and we're, I, I assured mom that we're good. So we'll see what happens. Bobby, you just relax. I'm not home. couple of announcements. Uh, we're continuing to collect pet supplies. And um, please notice the letter in the back from Ainsley that talks about her wanting to help some animals. So if you have any uh, gently used pet supplies uh, that you would like to share, we have a place for those. And that, Frank, is that what the bin is yep. for outside? Perfect. Very good. And the flowers up front um, from Easter, if you would like a flower, they're $10 each, a, a donation to the church. And um, so if you're interested today, there are flowers here. Don't be dismayed. Christ is alive, bringing you hope and joy to our lives today. Hallelujah. Would you stand, if you're able, and join me in the call to worship? We come as we are, doubting Thomas's fearful disciples, sorrowing exiles, rejoicing psalmists. You come as you are, risen Christ, Christ, Christ of peace, Holy Spirit, Spirit of forgiveness, God of life, God of new birth. Show us the fullness of your joy. Show us the path of your life and living hope. If you would please join me in hymn number 177. Ed will play it through once, and then we will sing it twice. So hymn 177.
scripture this morning comes from the scripture right after what I read last, I'm sorry, what Chase read last week. It begins at John 20, verse 19, and goes through to the end of the chapter. Hear now the word of the Lord. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors, because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. If I can just pause a moment, it was still the first day of the week. It was the day that Jesus was found to not be in the tomb. It was the day that Mary had gone to the tomb looking for Christ. She wanted to anoint his body, and we know the story. When, he got, when she got there, the stone was rolled away. Think about that for just one minute. That was no easy feat, was it? The fact that that stone, we're not talking a little pebble here, we're talking a stone that covered the mouth of the cave was rolled away. You know, during the week, this week, um, a gentleman came over to service our, our units, um, the wall units, and um, he looked at it and he, he looked over here and he said, well, can that organ be moved? And I said to him, I'm not really sure. Well, there were four women here. We could not move it. I know that that organ can, can be moved, but we were not physically strong enough. So think about it. It must have taken a lot of strength to move the stone away. We know that Mary later saw Jesus and she didn't know who he was. But when he called her by name, just as he calls every one of us by name, she responded, Rabboni, teacher. Think about it. And I, I know I've probably said this many times, but in the past two weeks, I've gotten to visit with two pastors that were very, very important in my life. One of them was the pastor at 44 Church back more years ago than either he or I want to remember. But that was the pastor that baptized both of my children. And I was over at Wesley Village on Thursday, and Reverend Baker happened to be happened to be there, so I got to chat with him for a little while. But he was one of the first pastors that I remembered that called me by name. Now I'm sure the pastor in my church growing growing up knew my <coughs> name, but you know. Even as I talked to Pastor Jim this, this past week, he called me by name, and that's important. Just as Jesus called Mary by name. The other person that I saw not too long ago was Pastor Jim Wirt. <coughs> pastor Jim Wirt was the pastor at Shavertown Church when, when I first started going there friend had invited me to their Saturday night service. It's a service that's at 5.30 every week. And that service, I don't even know how many people were in church. But Pastor Jim greeted me that, that Saturday night. And I went back the next Saturday, and he remembered my name. How important that is to us when somebody remembers the name. Now, we all have those occasions when somebody comes up to us and says, Hi, Carol, how are you? And you haven't got a clue who they are. <laughs> a friend of mine and I had this conversation this week, and she said, You know, I have to be better at saying, I'm really sorry, I don't remember your name. But I think we, people, we want people to remember us, hopefully in a good way. So at any rate, we're still talking about the same day, the same day of the week, and the disciples were hiding. 
They didn't know what was going to happen. They had no idea how the Roman leaders were going to react. And there they were. They were in a locked room. And Jesus came and stood among them. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After that, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. He was giving them the power to forgive sins. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. So then we know what happens, right? Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my fingers in the wounds left by the nails and put my hands into his side, I won't believe. So that happened in the first week, the first week after Jesus rose from the dead. So after eight days, his disciples were again in the house. This time Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. And Jesus responded, my Lord and my God. How many times do we feel like Thomas? Somebody tells us something and we're thinking, yeah, I'll believe that when I see it. So, you know, I, I do think that Thomas got a bad name, bad rap. And you know, the funny thing is, every year, this is the scripture. For the, in, in our list of scriptures, this is on the list for the Sunday after Easter. This Sunday after Easter is often referred to as a low Sunday. It's a low Sunday. Why do you think that might be? Maybe there aren't quite as many people as there were last week. But maybe it's just showing an example of what the disciples had gone through. They had been so excited when Jesus went into Jerusalem on the back of that colt, when he rode into Jerusalem and the people shouted Hosanna. And within a week, he was crucified on the cross, and they thought he was dead. But then Sunday came. Sunday came, and when they went to find him, his body wasn't there. He had risen from the dead, and that's what brings us here today. What brings us here every Sunday. No matter how much we love God and we're filled with joy over his resurrection, we have to come back down to earth. And we have to walk in a world that is filled with more potholes than hallelujahs, a world filled with mortgage payments and sickness and shattered dreams. And the gospel lesson today Is about someone who doubted. He doubted until he saw Jesus. It was an emotional roller coaster that the disciples were on. They had been up and down. And you know, did you ever think about the fact that why were there ten of them 
on that Easter evening, where was Thomas? But I think that we can all say that we all grieve in different ways. None of us grieve the same way. So Jesus comes into the room and walks up to Thomas. He walks up to Thomas and says, Peace be with you. Put your fingers here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. And that was the point that Thomas believed. And he responded, my Lord and my God. There are many scriptures written about the fact that we don't see Jesus in the flesh most times. We believe because we read the stories in the Bible. We read because we have been brought up in the, we believe because we were brought up in the church or we've just started coming to church. It doesn't matter. But we believe that Jesus died and died for us. There's a story that's told about Albert Einstein. We've all heard of Albert Einstein. I think it was the theory of relativity, but you know, don't quote me on that. But he was on a train. Albert Einstein, Dr. Einstein, taught at Princeton in New Jersey. And he was traveling from Princeton on a train. And the conductor came down the aisle to punch everybody's tickets. Einstein couldn't find his. He was looking in his pockets. He was searching in his bag. And the conductor said, not to worry, Dr. Einstein. I know who you are. We all know who you are. And I'm sure you bought a ticket. There's no doubt in my mind. As the conductor moved down the aisle, he noticed Einstein on his hands and knees. And he came back to, to Dr. Einstein and he said, please don't worry. I know who you are. You don't need a ticket. I'm sure you bought one. And Einstein arose and said, young man, I know who I am. But what I don't know is where I'm going. And that's the good news of Easter, isn't it, friends? That we know where we're going. We have been told by the Savior that his <coughs> life and death has promised us life eternal. And low Sundays don't change that. There can be many situations in our, in our lives that may, may change things. Elation and deflation. We've all experienced it. Maybe more times than we'd like to think about. But elation and deflation, that's what the, what the disciples were dealing with. They were dealing with elation and deflation and every emotion in between. But the truth that we always need to carry with us is we know whose we are, we know where we're going because the Son of God has promised us. And this, my friends, is faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty God, I am so thankful. You know, it used to be hard to preach about Doubting Thomas, but I think every year I get a little more comfortable with him, and I realize that there's a bit of Doubting Thomas in each one of us. But Lord, forgive us when we doubt. Reassure us. We know that your son died for us, and we are so, so thankful for that. Lord, bless us in all that we say and do and think. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you join me now in our Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 881 in the hymnals. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for prayer today, I want to bring um, someone to your attention. It's a 12-year-old girl who had a fall, a freak accident, and um, is paralyzed from the waist down. So please, please keep Eileen in your prayers. I'm going to be praying for a miracle for Eileen. Um, of course, you know, I, my understanding, Ed and I were talking about this earlier, that, he ju that she jumped off a picnic table and just landed the wrong way. So please keep, I don't know Eileen, I don't know her parents, I don't think Ed does either, but we had somebody ask us to pray for her. And so I ask you to please join me. And please continue to pray for, um, for Earl, Earl's son, Brian. The surgery was successful, but it was sh shoulder surgery, so it is painful. So please keep Brian in your prayers and, um, and Earl as he helps him out. appreciate the fact, and I know I've seen um, a couple of people, and I visited them, and they mentioned that they had gotten a prayer, gotten a card from the church, and they were really pleased. So thank you for mentioning that. Thank you for getting those cards ready, and we'll try to get you the information a little quicker. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see Grace here today good as, to as we continue to pray for your healing. Um, Trudy, has Andrea have, had any updates on her? She has to have a stroke to be able to okay. answer. Okay. But she won't go until after her 40th birthday next week because she's going skydiving for her 40th birthday. Okay. So encourage your prayers that she makes it to the scope. <laughs> makes it to the scope after she goes skydiving. Okay. <laughs> Don't you love what our kids do to us? <laughs> 
Wildwood this weekend for Macy's Cheerleading Competition. Oh, okay. The whole family, Rob and Erica and the, the kids. And next week they'll be in Florida for a cheerleading competition. Well, there you go. Oh, no. There, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pray for the whole situation. <laughs> well, we did have a very good Easter. We uh, had it at Erica's and she invited Kyle and his family and Rob and his family and his girlfriend. And we had 15 adults and <coughs> one big happy family. And I said, that's how it should be. That's, that's wonderful. It really is. We're that's all, that's wonderful. All there for the kids. And, and you know what? I think there are a few of us that are, that are just knowing how wonderful that is because we've had the same situations. Lindsay, I, I see you nodding too because, you know, Absolutely, I agree that that seeing the family together, I think, is important. Thank you for sharing that. But I agree, I, Lindsay. I know it's the same for us. You know, um, there are people that say to me, "And you have holiday dinners with your ex-husband?" And I think, "Yeah, we do." But it's important that that our grandchildren see see us together. Do we have others? It is a blessing to see. What are you doing to Jensen that he's so quiet back there? He's laying on the floor. It's fine. He's fine. Just letting go. He's fine. Just letting go. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Let's, any other, I'm sorry. Anybody have any, um, any? I'm thankful we got down 81 to 73 and back because it was horrendous. Was the traffic bad or? Bad rain going down and bad traffic coming back. Oh, well, I'm glad you did. I didn't think we'd make it for some point. Oh. <laughs> and Mr. Patience isn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> that some of us can identify <laughs> easier said than done. It's easy for a doctor to say don't move it. Right. Because I know that's what Brian's going through. He's in a, a sling and he can't move his arm. So it's, yeah, definitely easier said than done. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, I am so thankful. I'm so thankful to have Bobby and John and Jensen here this morning. I'm happy to see Grace back. I am happy to see everybody here this morning. It is wonderful to be able to be in this place and to worship, to worship you. I'm thankful for the families that were able to get together for the Easter holiday and to um, maybe ignore differences for the day, whatever, whatever works. But at any rate, um, I'm, I'm thankful the, the, for the families that are able to uh, just get together and celebrate holidays. Lord, I, I pray for Andrea, who will be having a scope, but, but Lord, I pray for her safety as she goes skydiving for her birthday. Lord, I, I pray that you will keep her safe. We are thankful that um, Dorm and Nancy have arrived home safely. We're thankful that Marianne and Lester um, may have had some trying times during the, during the travel, but they did arrive safely. Lord, I, I pray for a, a little girl by the name of Eileen. Eileen needs a miracle, pure and simple. 
We pray for Eileen that you will just touch her. Touch her and give her doctors and nurses the wisdom to know what she needs. But Lord, most importantly, we pray that you lay your healing hands on her. We pray that you just surround her with your love and your healing care. And Lord, I do pray for a miracle for this young lady. Lord, I, I pray for Tammy, who's going through health issues. I pray for, for Brian and the recovery from his <coughs> surgery. I pray for Joan, who ha has heart issues and continues to wear a life vest and is really hoping that she will um, be able to do well enough that she doesn't have to continue to wear that life vest. And Lord, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I pray for those that may be in the back of our minds today. You know, we all have people that, I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like there are people floating around in my head that every once in a while I think of them and I think, Lord, please be with them. Whoever those people are today, whatever unspoken prayer there might be, Lord, I pray that you will be with them. Give them whatever they need, whether it's healing, whether it's peace in their lives, whatever it is that they need, we pray that you will give it to them. And Lord, I, I pray for the Hazelton family who had a death in their family and will be celebrating her life um, later this week. I, I pray for I pray for that family that you will comfort them. I pray for those that are in the military that you will keep them safe and we pray for Ed's son as he um, will be returning home soon and we, we are so thankful for that. Well, he'll be returning back to the United States. And we're thankful for that and ask that you keep he and his unit safe. Lord, there's so many people that need you. So many people that don't need, that don't know you. And we just pray today that you will be with them. We pray that you will guide them and just touch their lives in a special way that they know that you are their Lord and Savior. Lord, I, I thank you again for bringing us all, all together here this morning, and I, I praise you for that. And I pray that you will be with us as we pray our prayer of confession. Risen Lord Jesus, help us to empty ourselves of all that hinders our awareness of your presence with us. Fill us with the joy of knowing your continuing presence so that like the disciples who first encountered the resurrected Christ, we too might hasten to share this great good news with others. In your holy name we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As God has blessed us in so many ways, let us now share our, share our gifts.
we give you thanks and praise for your promise of new life. We thank you for these gifts. As we offer them into your hands, may they bring hope and new life to those in need. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you join me now in hymn number 310, He Lives. Yeah. 